Bought some gossip here guys on a uh, Saturday afternoon um, and I wanted to do a video discussing the recent collaboration between David Hay and Richard Schaefer into um, Haymaker Ringstar Promotions which seemingly is going to be a new promotional force in UK boxing. Um, for you guys who saw the coverage on IFL TV yesterday, uh, it appears that the two guys have formed this company with a view to making a serious crack at the UK boxing market and with an attempt to take on the main promoters, um, be that um, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom or be that Frank Warren. Um, during the pr press conference, um, it was made reference to the fact that the guys would be looking to work with uh, terrestrial TV stations within the UK. Um, at present, um, it's unclear who those terrestrial TV stations are. We know David Hay has worked with Dave before, uh, although presumably this deal isn't with Dave because um, the way they were sort of talking about it yesterday kind of gave the implication of bigger and better things than that. So whether it's ITV, whether it's Channel 5, I guess these are very, very distinct possibilities. Uh, if I was a betting man, I'd maybe be inclined to think that they're going to be working with Channel 5, um, especially since it appears that Mick Hennessy's involvement with Channel 5 uh, has come to a sort of close. And funnily enough, if you look back at that period of boxing, you know, Hennessy had uh, Tyson Fury, who went on to be widely regarded as the number one heavyweight on the planet. Um, Huey Fury, who appears to potentially be fighting for the world title in his very, very next fight. James DeGale, who most people would say is the number one super middleweight in the world and obviously a world champion. And obviously Chris Eubank Jr., who, love him or hate him, is becoming one of the biggest names in British boxing. So I think there's an argument to say that that Channel 5 um, coverage, exposure and broadcast relationship certainly had a positive impact in one form on some of those guys' careers. And potentially David Hay will be looking at that and considering... Um, whether Channel 5 can add value to his future ambitions as a promoter. I've always thought that David Hay as a promoter was kind of half in, half out. For me, David Hay is a guy who is very, very keen on celebrity. Uh, we constantly see him living it up in Miami or on holiday if you follow David Hay on social media. And over the years, we've seen David Hay on, on various TV programmes he's done. I'm a celebrity, get me out of here, you know, when they, they all go to the jungle, etc. So I kind of believe that being a boxing promoter, especially a promoter to rival Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn, is very much a full-time gig. This is not a, uh, you know, dip your toes into the market. This is not a, you know, put a few hours in a week. It's a full-time job. And I've always suspected, because, you know, David Hay has been giving it large about Haymaker Promotions for many years. I've always suspected that Haymaker Promotions was really a vehicle to promote David Hay and to be a self-promoted fighter. Um, I've never really considered them as someone who could potentially rival um, the big two. Largely on the basis that I don't know if David Hay has the inclination to put the hours in uh, to being a boxing promoter when there's so much other stuff going on in his celebrity life. Um, you know, chilling with Jamie Foxx and Chris Eubank Jr. in Miami and at the UFC, etc. The interesting link up here is Richard Safer because he is an individual who uh, seems to be very, very highly regarded in the boxing world, obviously from his time with Oscar de la Hoya and Golden Boy Promotions. And for David Hay to be working with Richard Schaefer, for me, is an extremely mutually beneficial arrangement. For Richard Schaefer, um, he's obviously coming to a new market in the UK, and what better person to link up with than a guy like David Hay? Not only a fighter in his own right, who is gonna be involved in potentially some of the biggest fights in 2017 and 2018, uh, but also an individual who, as we've already discussed, does have that crossover celebrity type appeal. Um, you know, David Hay, when his name is associated with something in boxing, is going to create interest and is going to create hype. So from Richard Safer's perspective, I think this is a good deal. Uh, I think working with David Hay is a very, very easy route to market within the UK. Similarly, from David Hay's perspective, 
I think working with Richard Schaefer in the UK is a very, very good deal because it allows David Hay to be that figurehead, you know, that celebrity figurehead who pops up at press conferences, etc. But then it also allows him to go off and train for fights and go on his holidays and do whatever David Hay gets up to. Uh, whereas Richard Schaefer is probably the one who's going to be in the office grinding out the de deals and, and that sort of thing. Now, understand that Richard Schaefer has signed Tony Yoka. Uh, the Olympic super heavyweight gold medalist who defeated Joe Joyce. That's obviously a, a very significant signing. From me sitting here, I'm unclear whether necessarily the newly formed company Haymaker Ringstar will have any dealings with Tony Yoka. I suspect not. My instinct is that that will be dealt with by a separate and distinct company, which is Ringstar, that belongs to Richard Safer, and that fighters will either be Richard Safer fighters or David Hay and Richard Safer fighters. I don't know the answer, that's just me speculating. So if you know better, please leave your comments in the section below. Um, but it's interesting that they're targeting uh, some big, big marquee fighters that they've talked about to work with this new promotional company. Now in terms of who these fighters can be, I think look no further um, than the McGuigan Jim. George Groves, um, is obviously a very, very big name. And we saw him fight on terrestrial TV recently. Carl Frampton is obviously a very, very big name. Um, and he's in that gym as well. Then you've got a lot of up-and-coming talent, you know, the likes of uh, Josh Taylor, for example, who is widely regarded as one of the uh, the hottest prospects out there. I'm not sure if Andrew Selby's working with them. I might have I might have got that wrong, but there's some certainly some some depth of talent in that McGuigan gym and Clearly, if David Hay was able to promote shows, if he was able to promote a show headlined by David Hay with, you know, the likes of a Carl Frampton or a George Groves as the co-main event and Josh Taylor on the undercard, this is an event that would get boxing fans talking. Um, the other thing to factor in, of course, is the David Hay, Chris Eubank Jr. link. You know, people who've been following their social media will know that the two have been spending a, a fairly elongated length of time together. Um, I find it impossible to believe that David Hay didn't at least explore the possibility of working with Chris Eubank Jr. Um, given that he was setting up a new promotional company and given that they've been spending so much time together. We also know that the Eubanks have recently started working with um, Terrestrial TV with their link up with ITV. Um, could David Hay potentially have some involvement in that? I think it's an intriguing, intriguing deal. Um, I really think that the only way the Eubanks or Haymaker ringside can make a legitimate bid to rival the main two is if they sign fighters in bulk. Realistically, they need to be signing up um, 10 to 20 fighters of different levels, you know, but some marquee names in there. Because otherwise, the, the matchroom machine that has big fights with world title fights on it on a monthly basis is just going to swamp you. Having said that, if the Haymakers and the Eubanks etc. of this world etc. can work on terrestrial TV, potentially it opens it up to a new market um, and to a new set of customers who don't pay for BT Sports or who don't pay for uh, Sky or Box Nation. You know, one thing I'm thinking about here is if you're a fighter who's currently a, a free agent, if you are, for example, a uh, well, I guess a Carl Frampton. You know, I'm, I'm unaware if Carl Frampton has. Uh, a, a promotional deal set in stone. I know he works with the McGuigan's promotional company, but you know, if, if you were a Carl Frampton, the competition in the market has to be a good thing. You know, Carl Frampton knows he could rock up to Sky and probably turn himself into a pay-per-view fighter there. I'm sure he's aware that BT Sports, Bock Mason, and Frank Warren would very, very happily work with him. You know, now he's got all these new players in the market, so competition is a good thing. Um, I also think that competition is a good thing for the public and not just the fighter. If you look at this Eubank Jr. bill coming up at the Olympia sort of, you know, that was a bill that got much, um, you know, laughter about it initially, about how weak some of the, uh, the fights were for the pay-per-view. It's actually stacked up to be a rather attractive bill. You know, Chris Eubank Jr., love him or hate him, he's a good fighter to watch, let's be honest. David Price in a 50-50 fight on the undercard. John Ryder, Adam Etch is a real good 50-50 trade fight. Kid Galahad in a good fight. Andrew Selby on the card. Other young prospects like Chris Congo on the way up. You know, it's actually turned in to be a good card. And it's cheaper as well. You can buy that pay-per-view for a tenner. 
next time Eddie Hearn puts out a pay-per-view at you know 17 quid or 20 quid or 25 quid whatever it is whatever they're going to be in future people will be using the Ubank pay-per-view as a barometer they'll be saying you're charging twice as much as what Ubank charged and they had all of these fights in the undercard etc so I think competition in general is a good thing um, I think right now Frank Warren is obviously combing the market to look for talent given that he's supposedly putting on 30 shows a year uh, on BT Sports and Box Nation. I'm yet to see that materialise into an actual fight schedule which I'd be fascinated to see. I think that needs to be done. Um, but it's a very, very competitive time for boxing. And if I'm honest, the reason that it is so competitive, the reason Haymaker, Ringstar and that sort of stuff are actually entering the UK market I have to say, is due to some of the success that Eddie Hearn's enjoyed in the last few years. Guys like Richard Schaefer are thinking um, that the UK is a, a really good place to come and bring business and promote, as opposed to uh, focusing all their time in the States. So, all in all, I think it's good for boxing. I think the next three months will be very revealing. Let's see, um, you know, the, the, the calendar for the start of the year is very, very strong very strong the calendar of big fights let's see Frank Warren announce his schedule of supposedly these 30 bills I think that's going to be a, a fascinating addition uh, Chris Eubank Senior has been talking about building a stable of fighters David Hayes is supposed to be announcing a terrestrial partner and uh, you know launching a bid to sign numerous marquee fighters so let's see what it all looks like in a few months this is a, a fascinating time for UK boxing and for me is a, a sign of life in the market let me know your thoughts, people. Do leave them in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed this video, take the time to hit the thumbs up button. And as always, if you're new to the channel, <clears throat> please do subscribe. Many thanks indeed for watching.